Hi everyone, welcome back to the Getabury channel. Today we're at the Open Gate Brewery, the R&D and craft wing of Guinness. So come on in and check it out. Okay, so now we're in the brew house. We've just came from the top floor. So everything's gravity fed and steps down one floor at a time. So top floor is ingredient storage. You can see here that we've got two mills behind us. So a three hectoliter brew house is fed from the smaller one. A 10 hectoliter brew house is fed from this one. So it's quite easy. It's a nice platform here to see what's going on. So we've got our um, loiter ton here, whirlpool here, kettle here in the 10 hect brew house and then the three heck brew house is the newer um, brew house just over there on the skid um, i can see a mash filter is just down in here to the left hand side and then there's obviously uh, storage tanks for uh, hot and cold liquor now this kit has been here from the 60s and i guess what this is like innovation for the brewers and testing so they use this as a test plant for projects for all over the globe, but equally now what they do is they make beer on site to be dispensed in the open gate tap room, which we'll see on the next floor down. The five hec plant here in open gate, obviously it's beautiful. Um, German manufactured, Kaspari. You can see, you know, it's very easy to follow. So follow the diagram, everything's numbered. You can see you just literally push the push the button for the number, opens the valves, closes the valves, and um, does everything you need. One of the good things for a brewer coming in here, it's not like a brewery we have to move around tanks of CO2 or nitrogen. Um, it's all hard plumbed, so you literally connect up to um, some of the pipe work behind us, and you've got nitrogen, you've got CO2. If you need hot water, you've got a steam generator, which heats it live time. Um, and I will take you through the 10 heck brew house. This is the kettle over here. So if you can see, if we look up here, this is the grist case. So malt intake into the mash vessel. Obviously they've got a cereal cooker here as well if they're wanting to you know, perhaps cook rice or something like that as part of the recipe. So mash uh, takes place here, um, out of the mash into the loiter ton out of the loiter ton and into the kettle and then if needs be into the whirlpool but actually the large majority of the brewing is done over here with the mash filter because the efficiency is just phenomenal so you can get like 100% efficiency out of the mash filter so we'll nip around and take a little look at it perfect for getting really high efficiency out of it so what happens is um, comes out of the mash vessel so the mash is much shorter time because it's went through the hammer mill it's like a flour so then it's pumped in here, and you can see the compression here um, pushes all of the plates together, and then there's water pushed through it like sparging. So it just means because it's, it's flour, and because of the way it's been mashed before it gets in here, you get all the extract out of it in one go. So really super efficient way to brew. Taking a look at the Kaspari, this is actually a five heck kit. So you can see here, it's got a dual purpose or double uh, mashed on and kettles on both sides so you can move the mash in from whatever device or whatever system you're choosing you're using and um, we can see mixed paddles internally sparge balls there as well and then the loiter ton over here with the false bottom and the base and the rakes see that are obviously going to turn during the mash and then I'll come back over here for the boil Okay, so we're on the bottom floor. You can see the bar is, is literally just on the other side of the, the fencing that's there. So we, we've got, like, it's, it's unbelievable the quality of the equipment that's in here. So a full packaging line. Now, obviously all they're gonna do is package out of a keg um, because it's just um, 
quality control, R&D, experimental, this satchel area, but there's a can filling machine, bottle filling machine. You can see there's a range of, I think these are about 3,000 liter um, pressurized conical fermenters. And then we can see the dealkalizer here. What I quite like is like for, from a brewing point of view, it must be incredibly enjoyable to work here. Manifold of everything that you can possibly want or need from yeast propagation, sip, steam, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, wort, it just makes everything, you know, it's, it's all got purpose, makes it beautifully simple. Um, see all the different fittings and things, there's 10 of everything again, making it that easy for everyone. Another one of these uh, steam generators for hot water, for CIP in. Um, we can see a range of bright beer tanks here actually as we move down and then we have a flash pasteurizer here centrifuge here like it's just a it's a brewer's dream in here it gives you the flexibility to do whatever you want and you can see like there's absolutely everything you need everywhere if you want to take a sample of wort out of the fermenter you've got a, a steam connection here that allows you to steam clean it before you take the sample and then again after it just it's it's well thought out great place I'm sure for the, the brewers here in open gate to work in so see what I was saying about the steam cleaning steam cleaning the sample port you know that that's sterile just knock that off and then obviously open this up you've got it's just finished fermenting so it hasn't got dry hop on it yet lovely What yeast did you use in that one? Brian 97, yeah. It's got good potential, some bitterness in it. And then like, steam cleaned again. Unbelievable. <laughs> I need one of these now, that's the, the thing. Okay, so let's go and chat to Graham about what it's like working in Open Kit. Graham's title is brewing technologist currently, but he's going to move on to a new role where he's going to be the pilot plant manager here. So to summarize what, what you do here is you problem solve for other parts of the globe. Yeah, there's um, R&D um, and... Yeah, there's a, there's a few bits to it. So the, fir the first part of it is we're, we're development brewery. So we are home to innovation for beer for Guinness Diageo globally. Yeah. So whether it's any any of the markets that we operate in, if there's a new product coming, development for it, basically it starts here. Yeah. Um, the second part of it is uh, we have the Open Gate Brewery Tap Room. Yeah. Um, so part of that is that that's the fun bit. That's where we get to basically come in. as it says on the on the big screw the big uh, door on the front of the building it says yeah. anything we get to, we can dream up we get to brew up yeah it's pretty much it There's a little 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 yeah. bit more limits to that but broadly speaking that's what we do so yeah. we provide the bar with a steady series of novel recipe ever changing beers to basically keep consumers interested and demonstrate the skill of the brewers at yeah. Guinness to show that we're not just we're not just a stout factory. Yeah. If you want a lager, we can do lager, we can do ale, we can do IPAs, we can do sours, we can do quite beers, we can do fest beers, we can yeah. do not quite lambic, we haven't built the, the cool ship yet, but, but it's, you know it's in the pipeline. But basically <laughs> yeah. anything you want we can do. Yeah. And then the third part is tied into the R and D probably haven't done so much of it recently, but if any of our breweries worldwide are doing, looking at any process improvements, process changes, changing recipes or things, yeah. if need be, we can trial them here because we should have all the facilities they have so we can replicate their process. If it's a yeah. light return process, if it's a mash filter process, if they centrifuge it, if they filter it, whatever. Yeah. So you've a 10 hack brew house, five hack brew house, and you should just get rid of the one hack. Is that? Yeah, yeah. So, so the the one hack used to be the the used to be the real like small experimental one, but yeah. it was past its usable life. Yeah. So it's it's been removed. So the five the five hack bit of bit of internal debate. Yeah. 
We call it the five hec because yeah. we're usually looking at it as a production facility to go, we want to get as much work as we can out of it. Our R&D science and technology colleagues will call it the three hectolitre brew house because that's the, basically they're looking to get as, a small batch out of it so they can do little experimental fermentations. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's okay. now kind of the, the real experimental one. The 10 heck is the one where we do most of our production for the OGB. How long have you been here? That's like, would be a good place uh, to I've start. been here, I started here in December 2019. Okay. So I timed that perfectly for yeah. everything to go a bit mad with the world. <laughs> we'll, not, we'll not stick on that bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just two and a half, two and three quarter years nearly. Yeah. Um, Open Gate then, what is the... What's the idea behind it? What, what what audience are you trying to reach, or what audience do you think Guinness are trying to reach with this? So I think I think we are we are trying to reach everyone yeah. in a way because we're we're looking at so there's the bit I said about we're trying to demonstrate our skill as brew, our skill as brewers like we yeah. can make anything. Yeah. There's a little bit of we're also kind of maybe looking for the next big thing. So like Hop House 13 Lager started yeah. here. That started as a 10 heck brew in one of these tanks. Yeah. And has then made the jump over the road. Citra IPA yeah. is another one that, that, that made that jump. Um, so there's a bit of that. There's a bit of challenging, eh, challenging is the wrong word, but basically getting people who already love yeah. Guinness to come in and maybe try something a little bit different, maybe expand, expand their horizons. Yeah. Um, and there's equally, there's room here for people who maybe aren't habitually beer drinkers, aren't, aren't habitually stout drinkers, yeah. to come in and go, well, tell you what, you don't like stout, that's fine. We've got, we've got a lager, we've got something that's got fruit in it, we've got an IPA, we've maybe got, rather than having like some real big bitter IPA, we've maybe got something that's actually more of a New England, that's very sort of, soft and fluffy and doesn't have much bitterness yeah. to it loads of aroma loads of flavor uh we can we've got some funky ones going on with so, with some flavors in them we've got yeah. this is currently the only place on the planet that you can get uh nitro cold brew coffee stout on, on draft. draft taste of it there is lovely actually yeah. yeah. it's yeah. uh so you know that's that's something that started life here has moved out into the wider world um yeah. the guinness zero zero started its life here as well we did and small batches of that here i noticed that the alkalizer up yeah. there so was that installed to allow you to experiment here so that's the second one we've had but okay. essentially yes so right. we had one which we used for the development work for that yeah and that one's now there for any future development work or okay. process refinements we want to do on yeah. the existing one you mentioned hop house 13 i yep. remember seeing Two well-known Australian hops coming down via an e-commerce internet order uh -huh. from Getter Brewed in little hundred gram packs, uh -huh. but multiples of them. And I, was, uh -huh. well, I wonder what they're doing. What are you up to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what he's up to, and then the next minute, um, Hop House 13 came about. So, oh, like, yeah. yeah, I don't know yeah. whether to apologise to, to the <laughs> customer <laughs> for that or whether to say uh -huh. it was great. Um, like, we appreciate the fact that the Open Gate um, goes online and orders off the Getter Brewed website. Yeah. And that's important for you guys to know at home that you have a free run to do what you just want here with that yeah. stuff. You're not part of the big factory yeah. that's next yeah. door, in I a mean, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes we take advantage of the fact that economies of scale, they've got purchasing power that, that yeah. we don't. Yeah. So sometimes we, we kind of mug off the back of that and yeah. we'll maybe go, it's like, uh, guys, any chance we can get you know 20 kilos of that or 10 kilos of that? Yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. But for anything that's, you know, a bit more weird and wonderful, a bit more out there, any of yeah. like your experimentals, like your HBCs or yeah. um, Sabro or Idaho Seven or anything like that, then yeah, yeah we're coming to we're coming yeah. to guys like yourselves yeah. to get them because yeah. we're under the Diageo umbrella. Yeah, we're under the big company umbrella, but we are effectively still a craft brewery. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're still buying in craft quantities for yeah. things. So you know. What I liked about this walking around the brewery is everything has a sense of purpose, you know, as in it's, it's quite well thought out. You know, you've got CO2 yeah. and nitrogen, you've yeah. got live hot water, you know, with steam generators, you've got like pasteurizer centrifuges, you can do anything in here. Yeah. So it must be fun to brew in. Or yeah. not, maybe not fun, but easy <laughs> in comparison to other brewery We'll go houses. back to the fun part. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, yeah, it's it, any anyone who anyone in your audience who's been a brewer who's worked in a craft brewery type yeah. environment knows that it's not easy. Yeah. It's it's it's. There's an old colleague of mine that said, "This isn't craft beer. This is graft beer." Yeah. Because it's hard work. Yeah. It's like we're we're loading we're loading malt sacks into the. Okay, fine. We've got a mill upstairs, and we've got a hopper to. Or we've got a yeah. an auger to load the hopper. Yeah. But we're loading the sacks of malt into the into the that auger. Yeah. By hand. Yeah. You know, we're occasionally having to st- you know stir the mash by hand. Yeah. We're all the you'll see you'll notice that most of this stuff isn't hard piped. So. Yeah. We're laying out the hoses, building the roots, taking them, taking yeah. them apart. It's like you, you raise a fair sweat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is fun because you've got all the toys at your disposal. Yeah. As you say, we've got we've got centrifuge, we've got filtration, yeah. we've got bright beer tanks, we've got dual purpose vessels, we've got fermenters. Yeah. We've got the ability to do. Um, Diatomaceous earth filtration. We can do sheet filtration. We can do something that has just completely escaped my brain. We can carbonate stuff. We can nitrogenate stuff. Yeah. We've got you know steam. We've got hot water on demand. I mean, being able to brew without the confi- the confines of a hot liquor tank. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I I guess easy was the wrong word. Easier. Than, than most. You've got more flexibility. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see, we've we've got the flexibility to do just about anything. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And that's 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 the really good that's the really that's the really good part about it. Yeah. Um for me the exciting bit for me and it has been since I got into this industry yeah. is being able to produce something, see it right the way through from the start, through packaging it and seeing it on the bar over there. Yeah. Seeing people buying it, consuming it, enjoying it or not enjoying it and being yeah. able to get that feedback really directly. Yeah. It's obviously more fun if I see someone take a sip of something and go, oh, wow, oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's anybody who works in the main brewery, you don't get that immediacy of feedback. Yeah. So that, that for me is a really cool thing is being able to watch essentially customers enjoying the product real time. Graham, really appreciate your time. Uh, appreciate being given access to have a nosy around and um, make Happy sure. To have you? Yeah, make sure the next time you guys are in Dublin, pop in and check these guys out. Come and say hello to Graham, and he'll give you a bit of his time and a nosy around. Until next time, happy brewing. <laughs>